Tom here from Warren Systems. This is my TrueNAS core box that I've done some reviews on in the past. I'll leave a link to those, but it's been running and it usually sits just off and out of screen behind me. Uh, it runs lots of different things in TrueNAS core. Now I did a video about TrueNAS scale, the really, their latest beta that came out and uh, I really like it. It works quite well. I found the stability to be very good. I found a couple little things that I don't know have to do with the hardware or have to do with uh, software problems, but the best way to solve that is to convert this box over to TrueNAS scale. And it's pretty simple. I wanna walk through the process. I've done it before in some demos and this little USB, all we gotta do is take and load TrueNAS scale on here and we're not going to destroy the data. I know the easy answer is back up all the data, load it fresh. It's often what I will recommend people do. But of course I wanna cover how to do it with existing data so people who are interested in converting their TrueNAS core system over to scale can do so. That's what this video is going to be all about, leaving the data intact. Now, things we cannot leave intact. If you have any jails, I'm sorry, they're going away because TrueNAS Core BSD jails do not translate over to the way it works in TrueNAS Scale. Uh, the containering system is different. So you will have to rebuild those. If that's a problem, then that's just maybe where you stop. But for those of you that want to watch the rest of this video and uh, follow through on the process of how we set this all up, that's what we plan to walk through today. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire us for a project, there's a hire us button right at the top, which includes storage consulting and lots of design consulting around SureNAS servers. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. Now, onto the project here. So I have the system booted up. This is a TrueNAS Mini 3.0, as I said, running TrueNAS Core 12.0. 5.1. So the version number is the latest version available today in September of 2021. So I just make sure it's up to date. And uh, we're going to go here to system general. And what you want to do is save the config. Pretty simple. You should be doing this anyways. And there we go. Great. Now we've done it. Actually, I'm going to get save config, but make sure I also export the secret key. That's just the all password keys and secrets are encrypted, need to be uh, decrypted. So yes, we wanna make sure we have that. So I have the full backup. There we go, save. All right, now I have a backup with the secret key in there. And for good measure, I do recommend going over and you should have done this upon creation of the system. But in case you didn't, just so you have a backup copy of that as well, click on the gear icon and you want to export your data set keys. I highly recommend you always keep a copy of them on there. This is one of the things we cannot help with and neither can anyone else. If you lose your data set keys and you do not have a backup, the encryption they use is really, really good. And it is not something just arbitrarily verse engineered. So you need those keys in order to decrypt this if the things get messed up. So it's important that the keys belong to the ZFS pool. Uh, so it's or sometimes you may have multiple keys depending on how you've configured it. But yes, make sure you've done this and uh, have a backup copy of those. Always good measure just to have those before we erase this boot drive that has this information on it. Because that's actually where the keys are stored is always on the boot drive and they decrypt the pool. So if something happens to your boot drive or there's an issue, these are things that can happen. Now, next step, we're logged into the IPMI of the TrueNAS scale system, and we're just going to do this remote control. Obviously, not every system has IPMI, but boy, is it convenient when they do. And I've covered this before. I like the IPKVM HTML5 version that's in here, and we're going to go ahead and launch this. And we've already got the USB inserted, so now we got to reboot the system. And from there, zoom it out just a little. You can see it's seen the in there and uh, go ahead and reboot. So option 10, yes. And now we just gotta wait for the boot screen to come up. And here we are at the TrueNAS scale installation. Go ahead and press enter or wait for it to automatically boot. It should boot up TrueNAS scale and bring up the installer. Installer upgrade, sure. Let's go down here to our SATA drive where it's installed, press enter. Upgrade install or fresh install. Now we can do a fresh if we want because we have that backup. But let's go ahead and try the upgrade process that they have here. Worst case is we come back and uh, build it differently. That took a little longer than expected and it says the installer has preserved your database file. TrueNAS will migrate this file if necessary to the current format. All right, 
See how long this takes to get that done. And let's reboot it. All right, the system seems to have successfully converted. I have the proper IP addresses and let's see if we can log in. We'll go ahead and log in here. This is looking good. All right, let's go over here to storage pools. The pools are all there. Let's look at the shares, go to sharing and look at the window shares. All right, everything's showing up perfectly fine. So let's actually start testing these things and making sure they work because, you know, showing up and testing, uh, let's make sure everything's good. But before we do that, I do have some things that are locked in these pools that I'll have to unlock. And uh, we'll go down here and go ahead and unlock these real quick. Choose unlock. These are data sets I have that have passphrases. That's why they aren't unlocked as part of the normal system. So that looks promising. We've unlocked one of these data sets. Continue. Great. I have one more to unlock. Make sure it works. Go here. Here. And we're going to go ahead and hit unlock. Put the passphrase in. Yes. All right. Now let's actually do the real tests and see if I can get to one of these folders, like my video folder on here. That's part of the share. So we'll look at the share, show you which one we're going to go to, LTS videos. Let's go to that one. LTS videos and hey, look, there's all my videos. Make sure I can open one of them. Like when I did a video on that. I'm here for more systems and we're going to talk about NFS first. Opened in a different window. I didn't drag it over here, but yes, it opened. Yes, it worked. Let's... Uh, create something in a temp folder, new folder, test. Oh, I can read right to it. So I would say the whole process was a success. And now from here, let's one more time look at the network summary. And uh, yeah, here's all the different IP addresses and the different VLANs and it transferred them over as well. Now, one more thing I want to look at here is under data protection is the snapshot tasks and the cloud sync tasks and see if those are all still in here and if they work. So it even copied over, it appears, my cloud credentials. So no problem there. That's still configured. So great. Uh, we have our tasks and let's go ahead and try running one of them here. So these are the replication tasks that I have configured and uh, let's try running maybe like this one here. Replication has started. And that is successful. There's not much data because there's nothing else to synchronize on here. I'll have to wait till there's been some data changes and another snapshot created. But uh, nonetheless, these are working and been copied over and they're successfully talking to the other servers. That's really an important aspect of it is that this all worked. Now, the next steps I need to do is look at creating some jails. I actually didn't have any because I had already deleted them prior to even doing the migration. So now I can look at creating some of the containers inside of the new version of TrueNAS Scale. But overall, the process is pretty straightforward, pretty simple, and it'll be a separate video where I talk about configuring all these things. But this is now one more system I'll add to the pool of testing. So I can't guarantee your experience will be quite this smooth, but I at least can say that these process, generally speaking, has gone and it's not the first time I've done this before I did the video with some other demo systems I had built uh, but the process seems to have gone pretty smooth in this case and this is one that I've been using for a while matter of fact this system has survived many upgrades through version 12 when it was beta into the u5 that it's at now and now we're moving over to the true NAS scale that's beta so it's got a little history and a little usage on there but uh Pretty simple. Head over to TrueNAS Scale if you want to download it. If you want to have more in-depth discussion about this, my forums are a great place. If you have bugs to report on this, YouTube comments are not where you report bugs that you find with TrueNAS Scale. It is best discussed over in the TrueNAS forums for any bug reporting because it is still a beta product. I don't recommend this necessarily for production unless you're an enthusiast like myself and i know at least a few of you are and want to start diving into it to be an early adopter and i'm willing to put the effort in report the bugs and help make this product come to life as a very stable great add-on for uh, the true nas family of products so core as i said before is going to be around for a while and uh, scale is a another cool feature and there's all kinds of new neat things in there that i'm gonna have to do lots of videos on especially the new way the permission systems works which is a little different than before so that's all going to be separate videos on there the good news is the permission stayed i was able to log into my data set so for those of you that want to try hopefully this will make it a little less intimidating please back up before you do it and don't blame me if you didn't thanks and thank you for making it to the end of this video. 
If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a Sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.